So I think the rigger is actually underestimated and because now they can't lift it. Oh man, the RSP is here. So as you saw in the last video, we prepared the front of the machine. So you saw Tony and Aaron, they were taking off the panels, replacing them with special panels. The machine is prepared. Now the RSP is here. This is the centerpiece right here. Woo, and I'm excited because it's here in Texas. So I just thought, you know what? I'm gonna just turn on the camera and I'm gonna like walk you guys through the entire process. So as this whole thing develops and we build out our automation system and we get the RSP hooked to the machine, I'm just gonna take you through the process so we can show you how automation runs. And we're not only gonna fix your palace, but we're gonna talk about strategy, programming strategy, work strategy, and just give you guys an inside look at how your brain has to shift when it comes to automation. And we're gonna show you that manufacturing is king. What's up, Tony, Aaron? How are you guys? Good. Good. Boom. Boom. This this is like this is a, this is the main thing for the RSP. Yep. So it's a centerpiece with the robot. Yep. It's got the rotary position, so it this is the actual position that rotates and picks the pallets up. Awesome. So it's like the centerpiece. Yep. It's got the robot around it. You have 12 pallets, and it basically just rotates, goes up, grabs a pallet, puts it in the machine, takes the pallets out of the machine, loads them. And basically takes it to the setting station so you can unload it put a new part on it and then it'll either put in a storage place or take it to the setting station on the machine awesome and Whatever once it's want. all programmed and you have all your fixturing then the machine just runs on automatic yep. non-stop 24 7 year after yeah. year after year and it can uh, have as many programs as you want in it so the rsp sends the programs to the machine and the machine runs whatever whatever you want it to and then we have the other truck right here and this is where we actually have the pallet storage so basically the racking that goes around the center robot you can see each level like when you look at the level right there like boom the pallet goes on there let's take these off the truck get them inside it's heavy <laughs> it, it doesn't look like much but you think about it it's got a robot it's got rigidity like it's got to be a beast because as this thing rotates like it's it's moving right and it's grabbing big pallets so it needs to have that strength so although it doesn't look like much there's some weight on that centerpiece right there so i think the rigger is actually underestimated and brought a forklift that's too small because now they can't lift it so oh man and that's a ten thousand they ain't picking that up. Yeah. <laughs> they got to get a different truck. Oh man, that's, that's on the salesman's department. Oh. I was just told what to bring. I show up with the with the four tell me to bring. I bring, I bring the bring. Says 103. I bring 103, and uh, the piece is 10 10,000. So who's the sales guy? Uh, <laughs> that's manufacturing, man. We just solve those problems and make it happen. <laughs> Hey, quick pause of the video. Want to give a shout out to Smooth Monte. Yeah, that's right, you Smooth Monte. Thank you for helping support our channel and support free education. If you want to get shouted out in one of our videos and on top of that, get some free merch, make sure you hit that join button down below. All right, back to the video. And we got the, the center piece all set in place. They're locking it down. Automation, baby. We're showing you all of it. So you can duplicate it and make money in your own shops. So I'm gonna bring the outside pieces where the pallets will actually go on top. Oh man, what's up, brother? How you doing? Good, man. I'm excited. So when you look at, when you look at this, uh, this guy right here where the pallets are gonna actually stand. And then you have how many framing pieces? Is it six? 
Uh, three, four, five, seven. Seven of them? Yep. Awesome. And then basically, can you just walk around and show us like, so this morning at seven in the morning, you guys actually placed this guy. Yep. So you're locking everything down. We set this in place this morning and we went ahead and leveled everything with the fixators on the bottom and get a pretty rough level. I wanna, I wanna just talk about the, the fixators real quick. When you guys level the machines, I've had Makinos in here, DMG, nobody's ever done what you guys do with these machines right here. Maybe, uh, can you just talk a little bit about the fixators? The ones we use on the machine, those ones are lagging the machine down to the floor. Okay. These ones, it's just sitting on the floor. So we don't actually have to lag the fixator to the floor. We can Perfect. still make the same adjustments. Awesome. Get it perfectly level and we have five fixators on here and then we have five feet that go in between the fixators just for awesome. support. So then we put the uh, <clears throat> the brackets for the for the load system on the outside. We put them all the way around. Now we put the, the load system on the on the sides. We connect those to the lower brackets. And then we have long brackets that come off the center piece up top and we'll connect those and, and connect everything together. Awesome. And then we also set the setting station this morning. That's where the operator actually does the loading and the unloading of the work piece onto the pallets. The loading system will go and pick the pallets up and put them in the different locations on the pool. There's really not a lot of tolerances that for that because it's a it's an NC. Okay. So we can adjust the position of the pallet pool and it can go wherever we need it to go. Awesome. And so we teach every single point individually. So, so basically you just need to lock everything in and then you just show the robot where the pallet is in space and then make it yep, just we'll, perfect we'll get the, the X and uh, Y and Z positions for each individual location. So just like how we zero in tools into a CNC machine. We yep. put the tool in, bring it in, zero the tool to the spindle yep. bone. Yep. Nice. So as Tony said, there is actually seven of these bad boys right here. So he just he just placed one over there. Boom, boom. You put two pallets on that bracket right there. And then over here, I don't want to make you guys dizzy. Where we got six more. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that's going to create the whole circle. And then they're going to start putting the sheet metal on. And uh, whew, I'm excited. Just taking you guys on the complete journey of how it's done. Giving you that knowledge so you guys understand it and you can duplicate it and do it in your own shops to bring work back to your own countries. Boom. Check it out. Boom, the automation system is in place. What's up, brother? What's Yo. up? Tony and Aaron, thank you guys so much. All week, these guys have been grinding. We've been filming. And uh, Mark over here doing a lot of the filming. What's up, Mark? How's it going? Boom. You know, now we have memberships with you guys on YouTube. So if you go to our main page on YouTube, instead of just hitting subscribe, you can hit member. And then you can actually talk to all of us. You can talk to Mark, you can get all the behind the scenes content and we can just be in community together. Quick little shout out because I just, I don't always show the guys behind the camera and stuff, but uh, <laughs> these guys are like Titan, come on, let's go. So how about we just walk around? You can just educate them on the process and where we are in time. All right, huh? let's do it. All right, boom. So basically we set the main center inside and then uh, once we got that set and kind of leveled, then we uh, went ahead and put the framing all the way around the machine. And once we got the framing in, we put the pan in, the drip pan, 
and then we went ahead and put all the sheet metal around the outside and put the control panel on ran all the cables we're pretty close to being done uh, we got a few more things to do electronically but uh, mechanically uh, we were able to move the axes by hand take a pallet in and put it in the machine and everything's square and ready to go so what else actually has to happen before I can run it? We got to get a couple communications cables that go from here to the machine. And then once we do that, uh, we got a few upgrades to do um, software wise. Uh, we got to put a camera in the setting station and then we should be ready to go. You know, you know what's awesome too is that there's like two windows, like two panels that had windows on them. And then Tony came and was like, hey, where do you want these? Because they could, they were individual panels that like we could have a window on that side or that side, wherever we could split them up and stuff. But since we were filming, I chose to actually put it right here. So we could just be like, if I was here, we could just have a nice look all the way around and just walk through it. And then we can like look at it and see see the robot moving go inside and stuff so whew. when you come around this side so it's the end of the day on friday and the machine's turned off now these guys everybody's getting ready to leave this is actually where you load the pallet load the fixtures all of that and then it flips around the robot takes it stores it and depending on how you program the entire system it'll then go up and grab different pallets from the 12 different stations, place it in the machine when it's ready, and the machine just runs lights out nonstop. Boom, automation right here in our own shop, in our own country. I always tell you guys, outthinking the competition is what it's about. Having the strategy on not only the automation cell, but the strategy in how you program it, the speed in how you program it and how the tools move and the chip evacuations. Now you can't have chips getting clogged up, right? So like the chip evacuation is everything. Let's look at all variables, take it to the highest level and make the machine dance nonstop, day after day, just like how I showed you at Detroit Diesel. Those machines are just running decade after decade, the same machines, they never stop. 50 machines with like five guys. Why can't we do that in our own shops? Let's open the doors, show the technology, the process, and let's bring it into our own shops so we can bring work back to our own countries and make it happen. Boom, love you guys, love this trade. Uh, more videos coming, we're gonna teach you everything. We're gonna teach you everything. We're gonna show you from the small machines to the lays, to the mills, to big lays and mills, to grinders, Swiss machines, and then the big machines, full automation, so you guys can duplicate the process in your own shops and be successful. Love you. Boom.